Hi, it's time to learn destructive versus non-destructive editing with some of the uh, healing and clone tools. We're going to go file open. And I have all over my messy desktop a bunch of files. Now this isn't, some of you may remember this, a lot of you don't. This is Gorbachev, um, who was the head of the Soviet Union and during the Reagan era, I believe. And he had this birthmark. Now, I want to, I'm just going to, it's a good example of trying to remove it with the clone tools. So I, I wonder if I can, let's, let's, uh, oh, they're perfect. So now we have it nice and big, almost too big. It's down at the bottom left, see where it says 253. Percent. That's how much it zoomed in. I'm going to change it to 200. There. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's the layers panel. Now I like to unlock the background. See when it's italicized type and you have a little lock. So I'm going to double click and just call this original. I always like to save my originals. Um, I'm going to make my thumbnails. This is a thumbnail. Remember this tiny little preview of what's on each individual layer is a thumbnail. When I say click thumbnail, I mean click this little square that's on the layer. If you're going to change the name, you click, double click that so the box gets white. And if you want to do some other things, you can double click and bring up your layer styles, which I'm going to cancel. Um, you'll have different options um, if you have different things. Um, the layers have become very active. For teaching purposes, I'm going to go to Panel Options or right click in the blank area and I'm just going to make the thumbnails bigger so you can see them a little better. Okay, that said, I'm going to make a copy, Command J of the original Gorbachev. I'm going to drag it to the little file folder down here. See my little hand is a fist? Let go. See it's in group one. If I turn off the eyeball, you've only got one Gorbachev. It's hard to tell because they're identical. I, I just make this my backup folder. These are sometimes good work habits to have. I turn off and if you turn off this top eyeball, it turns up. If you have 12 things in here, everything gets turned off. If you only want one or two of the pictures turned off, you turn them off individually. So that's why there's eyeballs for the folder and eyeballs for each picture within the folder. I usually take my backup and put it down here. And now I'm going to this, Gorbachev. We're going to need three of these for the first exercise and only one for the second part of the exercise. So I'm going to make two more, Command J, Command J. Um, now I'm not going to, I'm going to turn off the eyeballs for the bottom two and the top one I'm going to call um, Clone Healing because we're going to use the clone tool. And this is destructive, mind you. That's why I need all three. Um, so here is this birthmark. And over here is the clone tool. See, it's about not quite halfway down. If you hover over, it says clone stamp tool. The only one of these two we're going to use in this exercise is clone stamp tool. Now, the thing about the clone stamp tool is you want it to say aligned. If it doesn't, it just takes a picture of the area and copies it and copies it and copies it. And you'll have a thousand, thousand eyes or something like that. You don't want that. This is how you want right now your options bar to look. You can use, sometimes a soft edge brush works better for the clone. The one thing that you must remember to do with the clone stamp tool is hold your Option key if you're on a Mac or the Alt key if you're on a PC. You have to click and what you're designating here is not, oh, take a picture of that exact spot. 
what you're designating here, I'm, um, I'm holding down the option key, click, let go of the option key. So when you start to paint, if I went up here and started to paint, I would be designating a diagonal distance. If I went down here, straight down, a linear distance down, vertical. I want, I'm going to start painting here, but what's going to happen is I have just defined, once you see the little, see that little crosshair? When you see that come up, that says, okay, every time I paint with the clone tool, it's going to be, that angle and that distance from the thing I want to um, restore. I'm, I'm sorry, retouch. Um, now, right here, that might that angle might not work as well as if I. And then usually you have to option click a lot. See, I'm going to option click here, and now when I go up to paint, it's going to be taking from that. Now, too much then you get a weird rep repetition. So you really do have to do a lot of option clicking. Notice, see, up here there's a different kind of a color to his skull. So I'm going to option click over here and add here, option click here. And you can make the brush bigger. I like to use the, bra the bracket key, so I'm going to use the right bracket key. And that might be a little too much. Maybe not. So just remember, it's not a one-size-fits-all. You can't just pick a spot and, and paint it. It'll look horrible. Um, you need to constantly reorient the brush and the direction and often the size of the brush. This brush is now too big. The left bracket key will make it smaller. And, oop, maybe a little bigger. And there. So now you've got, eh, it could be better, but it, that's basically what you can do with, the, with this brush. See up here, it says opacity up here. That's the opacity of the clone tool. So if I take it down to about 40% and I want to make it just look a little better, like, like it blends a little more, um, I can just do a little bit of retouching like that. And then I'm going to take the opacity back to 100 because if you leave it, you forget that you changed the opacity. And the next time you go to use this brush, it's doing something you probably don't want it to do. So there's clone healing. All done. Turn off the eyeball. And... Is this, I'm, oh, this eyeball is back on. Okay, turn off the eyeball for the second one. We're going to call this spot healing. Okay, now I'm on the layer that's the spot healing layer. I renamed it. It's highlighted. The eyeball is off for clone healing. There's spot healing. And we're going to go boom, boom, two up. And there's spot healing, and then there's healing. We're going to use spot healing first because it's a little bit different. Healing is a little bit more like clone. The way you use it is a little bit more like clone. The difference is the healing brush is very good for skin because it, it looks at the nuances of luminance and texture more than uh, clone does. Uh, but there are some cases where one works better than the other, I must admit. Okay, the thing about spot healing that's nice is you don't have to option click. What you do want to make sure is that content aware. Up here, always check your options bar. Content aware is on. There we go. Now, I'm working with the new version of Photoshop, the, the cloud version. I, I know there are some things different. I'm going to have to study them, but with this, I'm not sure it matters. I may, may, I'll have to do a new tutorial if it does. So here is Gorbachev. But notice, uh, now content aware means that Photoshop is looking around at similar pictures for you. 
Um, notice, no place to change the opacity up here. So, um, and you see this black, ooh, what's it doing? But it's making magic. I, I was pretty impressed when I first saw this tool. Do I have, uh, I don't know if I have a soft brush. If you want your brush to be softer, you can hold the shift key, let's say, and if I, I think, well, I never seem to get that right. Okay, let's, I'm just going to go in here and make sure, see, hardness, 100%, I'm going to change it to a softer brush, there. See, it's about a 55%. Um, so now I'm going to just do... And, oh, I'm getting a big mess here. I'm going to go over to my history panel. Boom. It looks like I don't have all my histories, which bothers me. I don't know how that gets changed. So I usually go back into the Apple system preferences. And, wow. No, no, not the Apple. Oops, bad, my bad. Into Photoshop preferences. Photoshop preferences uh, performance. Now, how did that get changed to 20? I have no idea. Maybe I didn't change it when I got the new version. I like to have about 45 um, histories. Okay. So I'm going to go like that, like that, like that, like that. And usually this one works pretty good. I don't know what I did wrong. But it's not too bad. Yeah, actually, it's not too bad. Let's see how it looks next to the spot. This is spot healing. This is clone healing. Yeah, no, no, no. Could be better. But let's see. Not too bad. So there's clone healing and spot healing. Turn the eyeballs off. Again, here we are back to the original. And this time I'm going to use the healing brush. The difference is we're back to the way the clone tool works because you have to do an option click. So I'm going to do an option click over here. You're defining a distance and get and fix that. Option click. There we go. Option click, option click, and it gives you, if you notice, inside your um, brush, it's giving you a little preview of what it's going to paint. So let's see, option click, click, click. Um, I'm going to change this one to a soft edge brush too, it's too hard. Here we go. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Now you can see the uh, screen flow screen. All right. Oh, I'm forgetting that option click because I do want to option click in here. And when you're retouching stuff, retouching is a real art. I have a great deal of respect for people who are good at retouching. I'm getting better, but it's something you want to know because you can do little jobs now. Let's rename this by double clicking on the word original and we're going to call this healing. So it's different from spot healing. So now we've got all three. So if I turn on all three, clone healing, spot healing, healing. So there's the differences. Now, if you're one of my students who's watching this and you want to get an A, you could go in and start taking away some of his bags and wrinkles. Uh, you can do extra to get an A. But these three are the start, but now we're going to do non-destructive. So I'm going to highlight all three of these by holding the command key, control key on the PC. I've got all three selected. Up here in the upper right, those, those three little marks, it's on most panels, see? Click that and another menu pops up. New group from layers. Those are three layers that I just highlighted are going to go in this group. And I'm going to call this D 
destructive retouch. You don't have, you can call it whatever you want as long as we know what it is. So they're the destructive ones. We're going to turn off the eyeball, back down here, go to the backup, go make a copy just because I want an extra copy. It's just my working with a net, so to speak. Um, turn that off. So now I have two, I have destructive retouch and I have backup. Now I'm going to show you how to do this non-destructively. So, uh, let's see. The first one is going to be, uh, let's just clone. Oops, clone. So I just retitled this. And in, all I need is, oh, actually I don't need, I shouldn't put non-destruct, non really. Non-destruct. I'll all because all I need is the one. Um, I'm going to name the various layers. Uh, uh, the clone and all that stuff. So down here at the bottom, there's this little paper-like icon next to the trash can. If you just click it, you can get an empty layer, and it'll automatically put it above the layer that you're sitting on. Boom. You have an empty layer. See? Nothing there. So I'm going to first call this ND for non-destruct clone. There we go. More organized. Now, the one trick that you have to make sure you do when you use non-destructive, and non-destructive, you will come to love it if you use it. I'm going to change, see, again, oh, let's go back to clone. See where it says current layer? That means when you're cloning, you're only working on the current layer. We want to work on the current layer, either all the layers or current and below. I'm going to go current and below right now. Now remember, with the clone tool, you have to option click or alt click. So I'm going to option click and I'm going to paint that. Option click and I'm going to paint that. Option click. I'm going to paint that, 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 option click, paint that, that, option click. So I'm just, now what's happening is, I'm going to show you, I never painted on the original. That's where I painted the fix. So you have way more opportunities to if you need to turn down the opacity of the layer if you need to like clean up little edges it's just gives you more really more power <laughs> uh, so non-destructive I found when I started working at first I was re a little resistant and I've talked to a lot of people who have been until you start to really if you like I forced myself to use it at work not at work teaching, at work um, doing graphics. And now, honestly, I'm going to I'm going to turn down the opacity of the brush for a second because I want to get just a little bit of this in here, a little more. Oh no, it's like maybe it's too much. No, it might be good. So there you have it non-destructive with the clone. Now I'm going to go back here to go, I'm going to turn this eyeball off. I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to go ND spot, ND, ND, ND spot, healing, healing, oops, and oh, I go to my that band-aid looking thing, go to the top one that uses content aware. Now it's a little different. It doesn't say current layer. It says you either have the choice to sample all layers or none no layers. So if you want to be non-destructive, you go sample all layers. See that up there on your options bar. So now I just do boom, boom, boom. And I'm doing it non-destructive. Remember, oops, that's a little icky. Ew. 
That's not good. Oh, well, I'm getting there. Let's see. I can always fix that part because I am working on destructively. So, let's see. All right. See, I don't like this part. And since it's not on there, I'm going to go get the eraser tool and erase just a little bit of this that I think looks a little crappy. Um, and I have to fix that. So now I'm going to go back to the spot healing and click, 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 click. So there you have it. So there is the non-destructive using the spot healing where you don't have to use the option or alt key. And that, see these two fixes are on their own layers and you never change the original. You just have the fixes. You can merge them together. You can change the overall opacity. Let's say you decide the fix is too dramatic. I'm gonna turn this one off so we can see well, let's see, let's, let's go back to spot healing. Here's the opacity, on the layer's opacity. See? So you can, this, it, you can even use a blend mode. I, I don't think they work that well with something like this. Well, lighten doesn't, isn't too bad. Color dot, ooh, not good. Overlay, ah! So I, I'd go back to normal, but you can play with that see what you see what you get um one more turn off the eyeball and go to the main layer so when i get an empty layer it goes right above and i'm going to say instead of i'm going to say nd nd heal that's just because i'm going to now use the healing brush where you have to option click <clears throat> healing brush Again, don't forget, it says, this one works a lot like the um, clone tool, you current and below are all layers. I've used either one. <clears throat> it just depends on how many layers I have. I don't want to get too much stuff. If I'm just working on the layer below, it's more controlled, but often I don't. It just depends. See all my histories that are building up too. Gives you a way bigger net. It uses RAM. Click. Now notice I'm painting on the empty layer. Click, option, click, or alt on the PC. And here I am cleaning this up. And like I said, you'll you'll if you're like experimenting with what's gonna work better, and instead of having a million versions of it, um you can be working with one version and multiple um, retouch versions that you can turn on and off the eyeballs and make comparisons. It, it's, uh, it ends up being a more efficient way of working. I know people are probably saying, well, so what, blah, blah, blah. You'll see, and then you'll make up your mind. This one, I'd say the clone works the least well the spot healing, let's see the spot healing compared to the regular healing. Not so sure. I think the regular healing worked better on this one, even though the spot healing is easier. So then what I do is, for my students, you have to highlight, go ahead and hold down the command key, the control key in the PC, and the non-destruct Gorbachev, former leader of the Soviet Union and new group from layers. A new group would just be an empty group. New group from layers would say, oh, she's got those four selected. Boom. And then I just call it ND. You can call it non-destructive and save as. And then you're going to um, put Last name, Jones, Susan, 
gorbachev.psd and you're going to save it into your folder on the desktop. Susan, because you're going to make sure you take this home so it doesn't disappear. And save. Always maximize compatibility. I don't even want to see that window again. And we can change it in preferences, but that's not this lesson. Okay, so we're done. Great. Talk to you later.